I'm walking home from work and I have my hat on because it's really sunny and hot and I don't want to get sunburn on my head. <laughs> I got on my sunglasses and my hat. And uh, yep, not much shade on the walk home and it's very hot. So I've been walking into work, which on the way in I can knit because it's pretty cool out, but I'm walking home for lunch right now, and it's 80 something degrees Fahrenheit, <laughs> and my hands are already sweaty, and I've only made it one block, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, just thought I'd show you, it's not the most exciting walk, but uh, I'm enjoying getting out and uh, experiencing the weather and smelling the fresh air and burning some extra calories so it's not so bad i'm really liking it Hello everyone and welcome to the D Hard House podcast. My name is Alicia. You can find me on Ravelry as Liddy Knits 2 and on Instagram as Read Knit Run. Today is Saturday, May 4th of 2019 and this is episode 61. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're a new viewer, I'm so glad you found this channel. And thanks for coming back if you're a returning viewer and for subscribing to this channel. I really appreciate it. So yes, it is May 4th, which may the force be with you. I am not wearing any Star Wars themed outfit today because I'm wearing a finished object and I thought that was more appropriate. But happy Star Wars Day to all of you out there. And um, yeah, I guess I'm going to have to watch a Star Wars movie later. <laughs> so yes, it is to start off the podcast. I am in Texas. I'm in West Texas. And uh, it is about 65 degrees Fahrenheit outside. So I have the windows open and the ceiling fans on. And it's just, just cool enough to be wearing this sweater right now. So, yeah, I'm kind of warm. I'm kind of warm now. I've had it on for a little while. So, anyway, so this is my podcast about my knitting and crafting. Uh, so, I'm just going to go ahead and dive right in. So, for finished objects this week, I actually have a lot. Okay, so first let me talk about the sweater that I'm wearing. I finished this a couple days ago. Um, so yeah, this is um, the Brick Sweater by Claire Lee, and it's a free pattern on Ravelry. Uh, it is a worsted weight, top-down raglan sweater, and I'm finished! I finished the whole thing. I weaved in all the ends. It's good to go. Um, I'm going to awkwardly stand to show you guys more of this sweater. So first, yes, I'm wearing sweatpants. Please don't judge me. It's the weekend. <laughs> so um, this is the finished uh, brick sweater and I love it. I absolutely love it. It's... Um, a really nice length 
and I really love the tubular bind off on all the ribbing and I like the color I like the length of the sleeves it's is everything that I wanted you guys everything now I did knit this straight down like the pattern called for I did not do any waist shaping I may be wishing that I had because as you can see I do have a waist but um the sweater doesn't really show it <laughs> so um maybe next time I'll make sure to put in some waist shaping um because I think that would have made this mm, a bit more flattering for for my shape but um Yes, I did modify the sleeves. I did not do the decreases in the pattern. I did my own try it on as you go kind of decreases. And I also changed um, the collar a bit. So last time I mentioned that the, the neck opening was really big, really big, like was falling off both shoulders big. And I didn't want a really big neck opening. So um, I did. So in the pattern, the instructions just say pick up an even number of stitches and then knit so many rounds of ribbing. So it wasn't super specific about how many stitches or anything. So I just, you know, picked up for every stitch and... The neck opening was still really, really big. Um, like came all the way out to where it just barely covered my bra strap. Yeah, so I don't really want that. So I ripped out that collar and redid it where I picked up every other stitch. And it cinched it in so much better. So part of the problem with the loose collar was that I had a lot of fabric bunching up in my underarm because this was sliding down, which meant all of this was sliding down, and the um, chest portion here was also sliding down. So I had a lot of fabric bunched up in my armpit. So it wasn't very flattering and it wasn't very comfortable. So by picking up every other stitch instead of every stitch, it cinched the whole thing in like I wanted made the neck opening much smaller and brought all this fabric up where it's supposed to be. <laughs> so um, I'll make sure to make a note of that on my Ravelry project page. But um, yeah, that, if I wouldn't have thought of that, I don't know that I would have been wearing it. <laughs> Honestly, I probably would have just finished the collar and then said, this is garbage because I didn't like the way that it fit. Uh, so I'm really glad that I did that instead. And I love it! So uh, the pattern is Brick by Claire Lee. Like I said, is a free pattern on Ravelry. And the yarn that I used is Yarn B Soft and Sleek Low Pill Yarn. Uh, it's 100% acrylic worsted weight yarn from I purchased it from Hobby Lobby and nope as I get close it changes the color <laughs> so back here is good and the color is tobacco and I used how many skeins did I use that's a good question I'm gonna have to put this on the scale and find out just how many I used because I can't remember how many I purchased but I do have one full skein that I did not touch um, sitting on the cell on the shelf and I had to dip into a brand new skein just to do the collar so um, yeah I can't remember <laughs> but I will figure it out <laughs> okay so I had to change out of that sweater because I was dying <laughs> dying you guys um, so now I can drink my coffee and not overheat by the way our co-host is with us today 
My black Labrador, Marjorie, is over here laying down on the couch next to me. She's very snuggly today. So, more finished objects. I finished my shorty socks, my Desert Vista Dye Work socks, finally. And they both fit, thank goodness. So, um... These are shorty socks knit out of Desert Vista Dye Works yarn, and the colorway is Dry Bones Gray. Are you going to focus? Okay, there we go. So it's a tonal gray with some, looks like pink and green speckles, and it was a I, I would normally say really fun to knit up, but I had an oopsie on this pair of socks, and I knit one entire sock too small. Couldn't even get it over my foot. Mm -hmm. So, this pair that fits <laughs> uh, was knit on a US size zero needle with 64 stitches. I did um, two by two ribbing short row heel and the standard toe all in one color yarn no contrasting toes or anything like that um the very first sock that i knit was on a us size zero with 60 stitches and it wouldn't fit so i really need to have 64 stitches if i'm going to use a us size zero that's the lesson <laughs> i figured it out so, um, I did a rip out that first sock that didn't fit to knit the second sock here that would fit. And it got me, so ripping out the 60 stitch, 60 stitch sock to knit the 64 stitch sock, that got me all the way into the first decrease on the toe. So I only needed to join in extra yarn to finish the rest of the toe. So that's what four stitches does, <laughs> at least at my gauge and whatnot. So anyway, they're finished. Uh, the ends are woven in. They're ready to go. They've been sitting on these blockers, which these um, sock blockers have yaks up at the top. And I picked these up at DFW Fiber Fest. And they are made by Perfectly Catchy Designs. Yes. And I love these sock blockers. So, um, yes, I have another pair of socks to add to my collection. And I am going to be making myself some more shorty socks because I really like wearing them. And if that wasn't enough, I also finished the shawl that was on my needles. What? <laughs> what? Wardrobe change. <laughs> I should have just been wearing all these things and I could have put my feet up on the camera and showed you my socks. And <laughs> Anyway. Yes. So here it is on. It has not been blocked yet. So after blocking, this will be even bigger, which will be nice, but it's still a really good size without blocking. Uh, and I still have a couple ends to weave in, but let me show you this shawl. So this is a design that I'm working on and it's knit out of two colors. So it's two colors that coordinate. So I have a solid purple, which is from um, Cascade Heritage Yarns and the color number is 5633. And then the speckle, I went with a nice speckle. This is from Lucky 13 Fibers, and the colorway is purple gray speckle. <laughs> uh, and I used the entire skein of both. Yes. So this is, you need a full skein of each. Mm -hmm. But look how pretty it is. Oh my goodness, yeah. So, um, it's a big triangle shawl, and it's knit from 
from one corner out and it has uh, garter stitch and slip stitch details and I wasn't able to finish the shawl and garter stitch like I originally thought I would. Um, yeah, I was down to the wire here. But I love it. I think it looks so nice. Yeah. And I need to weave in this end right here. This is how much of the gray speckle yarn I had left over. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, um, so I need to finish writing up this pattern. I need to get some really nice pictures and then I'll be able to publish it. So Michael and I are thinking that we might go camping next weekend. Um, this next week is final exam week at school. I teach for a living. Um, so final exam week, Friday is graduation, and then we're thinking about going camping um, Saturday and Sunday. And depending on where we go, um, it should be a nice backdrop for pictures. We were thinking of going to Cloudcroft, New Mexico to go camping, but it there's a bunch of rain in the forecast right now, so that might not happen unless the forecast changes. <laughs> but I don't really want to go camping in a tent and get rained on the whole time. So um, we might end up going somewhere else. But we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, um, I want to get nice pictures of, like outdoors in the forest and trees and stuff like that. And we don't really have that around here. So, <laughs> so we'll see. I'll keep you posted. <laughs> Okay, so just to take a tally so far, I finished a sweater, a pair of socks, and a shawl. And I'm still not finished with my finished object section. Yeah, I've had a really productive crafting week. <laughs> so now let me show you what's next because you guys, the cuteness is going to kill you. What? Yeah. I crocheted some little stuffies. Oh my gosh. Ah! Are these adorable? Okay. Picture time. Yeah. Um, so my sister and I are going to be vending at a craft show at the end of this month. And I decided that I needed to sell need. I need to sell crochet stuffies. <laughs> okay, so these are the bears that I have finished so far. I have another one in progress, but when they're in progress, they don't look like anything. So um, I made this one first, and he has safety eyes, and then I stitched on his nose, and he has a scarf, and it's adorable. And this is crochet, by the way. So I love crocheting stuffies in particular. Um, I've never knit a stuffy, and I'm okay with that right now. <laughs> Do enjoy the base on that vehicle that is driving by, by the way, which happens all the time. Um, but yes, he is adorable. Oh my gosh. And then I thought, okay, no, not me. Michael, my husband, suggested you should make it the next one smaller. And I was like, you're right, smaller is cuter. So then we got this guy. Yes, who is smaller. Of course, when I finished this one, Michael was like, go even smaller. I probably will. <laughs> um... But so I added, uh, he does not have safety eyes. This one I did um, French knots for the eyes and then also stitched on uh, the nose. And then I also gave him some little, uh, little underbelly fur detail here with some yarn. And yes, they all have scarves. All of my bears are going to have scarves. And um, then I thought, you know what? I really want more variety in my bears, so um, 
I figured we also needed to have a black bear because black bears are adorable. Oh my gosh. Okay, so all my safety eyes are black. And um, I just wasn't sure they were going to show up with this very black yarn that I have. Um, so I gave him some white eyes. I did um, French knots with the white yarn and stitched on his nose. I did order some safety noses. So some of my bears are going to get safety eyes and safety noses um, and all that stuff. And I need to look up again the um, age group for the safety eyes and safety noses. Like whether they're safe for baby babies or whether they have to be a certain age to have the safety eyes. Um, because I would like to know that when I'm selling these things. So, oh my gosh, the black bear. He's so cute. So, uh, so we have some light brown bears and a black bear. And currently in progress, I have a dark brown bear. Like I said, it doesn't look like anything right now. But this is a work in progress. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I'm just using up yarn that I have in my stash, but I might have more colors. I don't know, but I love them and they're so cute. I'm so excited. So yes, I have, um, three bears finished and, um, I want to make a whole bunch more and I'm thinking about also doing, um, some foxes I don't know about raccoon. That one kind of scares me because you really need the coloring on the raccoon to make it look like a raccoon. Um, but yeah, I have till the end of the month, so I need to get cracking on uh, making some more bears. But are they not adorable? I mean, come on. What? And I definitely have a thing for bears. If you can see this candle over here. Okay. Excuse me. This is, um, this is a candle from Bath and Body Works and it's the winter scent, which I absolutely love and I can't seem to find. I just went there yesterday and I couldn't find the winter scent anywhere, which makes me sad. I not only love the smell, but I love the label on the candle because it has a black bear on it and I've got this kind of black bear theme going on here with the <laughs> plaid anyway um so yeah I had to make a black bear he's adorable okay enough about how cute they are these are finished and I'm thinking about adding a tail so he currently does not have a tail but I think I think they need tails I think that would just seal the deal for me on the cuteness so yep I'm hoping to add a lot more to this collection so hopefully you will see more um crochet critters in the next few episodes and then I do actually have a work in progress that isn't another bear <laughs> I got the body done <laughs> um I also have a sock, so uh, I need sock knitting for when I'm walking. I don't need it, but I like having sock knitting while I'm walking. So um, I knit the first sock quite a while ago. I don't even know how long ago I knit this up, but, um, oh, and there's like a piece of something in here. Okay. Uh, anyway, um. I knit this first sock a while ago. This is for Michael and this is out of my self-striping yarn. This is my Over the River colorway, which was one of my Christmas self-striping colors. Um, so I did cast on the second sock uh, this week. So you can see I'm working my way down the leg and I did offset the stripes so they're going to work up in the same sequence just at a different starting point um, and I didn't use any contrasting uh, yarn for the heel so it'll I'll just continue in the self-striping color 
on the second sock as well and we'll see how that works up so yeah I'm excited uh, to hopefully finish these soon here is the self striping yarn in the gobstopper ball which I just love it makes the self striping even more fun if it couldn't already be more fun that does make it more fun so anyway yes I'm having fun with this and so it is in one of my um, flat sacks it's just fabric no interfacing no closures so it's really easy to knit on the go while I'm walking to work or on the treadmill and I just love it so that is it for the craftiness so this week was this past week since I've seen you guys uh, it was dead week at classes so dead week is what is commonly known as the week before final exams um, dead week is traditionally the week where you don't really learn anything new you're just preparing for that final exam however due to the amount of time we're given <laughs> I'm not allowed to just <laughs> not teach anything that week. Um, so we did cover the last few sections for the semester. And um, hopefully all my students are studying for their tests next week. But, um, yep, so gave my last lectures. Uh, gave out all the announcements of where and when and how long and how many questions and all that stuff for the t final. And uh, now it's just the waiting game. I need to go in uh, to work either today or tomorrow and finish making all the copies of the test so that I'm just ready to go. And, um, and then once I get the tests back, once the students are finished taking them, then it's just going to be grading and, and turning in grades and... and finishing everything up. So um, that's where I am right now. I'm kind of in waiting limbo where I kind of have nothing else to do until <laughs> the final exam grading chaos. Uh, but that's okay. It's every semester this rolls around. So <laughs> I know what to expect. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's just that last week, you know, the students are tired, the teachers are tired, the staff are tired. We're all tired. We're ready for a break, and everyone feels it, but at the same time, we're still not done yet. So, <laughs> so that's where we all are right now, and um, so like I m mentioned, uh, Michael and I want to go on a camping trip next weekend, and I think other people are feeling the same way, like ready for a break. So it'll be nice to, to get outdoors and go camping and take our little fur ball with us and uh, go get some fresh air. Get out, get out and experience the world. So that'll be nice. Um, I did do some more running. Oh, yes. Running. Oh, you guys, hang on. I'm, I did the mud run. I totally forgot because it was a week ago. <laughs> um, yeah, so I did the Texas Warrior Mud Out. And uh, everyone who finishes gets a medal. So I didn't, like, win or anything. Um, everyone who participated got a medal. So yay, I did it. Uh, it was a muddy obstacle course race and it was the total distance was a 5k so 3.1 miles and scattered throughout those three miles were 23 obstacles so we had to um wade through water muddy pits we had to go under there were nets over the pits and we had to go under the nets through the mud there were um walls to climb over like wood walls to climb over there was a 
muddy, slippery wall with a rope that you had to climb up and over, which I think was my favorite obstacle. It was really cool. Um, there were tubes, um, tunnels. There, what is the word that I'm thinking of? They, I mean, they're plastic tubes. They're like water lines you would see underground and whatnot. And uh, so they were laid on the ground with muddy water in them and you had to crawl through it. Um, yeah, just lots, lots of mud. There were mud and rope and wood walls to climb over. So, oh yes, we had to carry a 50 pound sandbag a certain distance. We had to team up and carry logs over a certain distance. So yeah, um, there were 16 of us on our team and it was really fun. I'm super proud of myself for number one going because I totally wanted to check it out. <laughs> um, it was 90 degrees, a cloudless sky, but there was a nice breeze, thankfully. Um, so I did coat myself in sunscreen like crazy because I have, if you couldn't tell, very pale skin and I don't really tan. So yeah, I'd rather be pale than lobster red. So um, several of us were spraying on the sunscreen like crazy. Hallelujah for spray on sunscreen because I sprayed my... Um, my part. So I had put my hair into pigtails um, because it's kind of short and uh, doesn't always stay in one ponytail. So I had put it in pigtails. So I had this part running down the middle of my head. So I sprayed that with sunscreen pretty heavily and I'm really glad I did. Um, and it was fun. It was, it was fun. And it was fun because of the other 15 ladies on our team. They were really encouraging and supportive and um, it would not have been fun without them. So thank you ladies for inviting me. It was a blast. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put in some um, pictures and video at the very end of the podcast to share with you um, some little tidbits from the race. Uh, I did leave my phone in the car because I'd never done one of these before and I didn't want my phone destroyed. So um, our team leader, she brought her phone in a plastic bag, which was super smart and uh took pictures and video along the way as much as she could before the bag got all muddy. Um, so, so I'll share some of that at the end, but, um, yeah, it was fun and I was really sore the next day, not at all that day. So the race was on Saturday. Was it on Saturday? Yes. The race was on Saturday and, um, like I said, it was sunny and a little bit of a breeze, thank goodness. Um, so wading through the muddy water. Oh, we had to pull ourselves across a pond. We had to get on a raft and there were ropes strung across it. So we had to pull ourselves across the pond. Um, so since it was so warm out, um, the cool water and stuff was kind of nice. Um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah. So I had to drive, what, an hour, a little over an hour to get to the race. So after we were done, I had to drive back. Um, my husband didn't come with me because he had already planned to go visit his family um, that same weekend. And I would have gone with him, but I signed up for this race. So, <laughs> so I had to drive myself, which wasn't a big deal. Um, but then after the race, I had to drive myself home. So I did. Silly me. Uh, of course, I was like, well, while I'm in town, let me stop at Sam's Club. <laughs> so I had mud on my face. I had changed my clothes after we were done racing, but I didn't like clean my face or anything. So yeah, I'm in, I'm in Sam's Club and I've got mud on my face and these people keep looking at me like, um, hello. <laughs> shower much. So yeah, whatever. I didn't care. I ran a mud run, you guys. Uh, 
So, um, yeah, I stopped at Sam's Club, picked up a few things, drove myself home, got here and was like, yeah, I'm too tired to cook. So I picked up some fast food. I took a shower, changed my clothes again, sat in front of the TV, ate my fast food, and totally fell asleep on the couch. (laughs) Three in the afternoon, totally fell asleep on the couch. Like... Or five, whatever time it was, I finally got home. Um, yeah, so <laughs> that was fun. And then, uh, yeah, the next day on Sunday, I was really sore because I had used my arms to lift a 50 pound sandbag and a heavy log and pull myself up a rope over a mound of, of dirt and lifting myself over wood walls and whatnot. Anyway, so mostly my arms were sore because I run for a lot of my workouts. So my legs felt pretty good, but lifting my own weight over things. Yeah. So my shoulders were sore, um, which thank goodness my husband gave me a nice shoulder massage when he got home. Uh, I was like, I don't think I'm going to be able to write on the whiteboard at work because my shoulders hurt so much. (laughs) Could you imagine? Yeah, my math teacher was sore from her mud run, so she couldn't write on the whiteboard. (laughs) So um, I was able to. I felt much better on Monday, but uh, I just had this funny thought of, yeah. (laughs) Anyway, so I did it, you guys. Um, and I'm really proud of myself for pushing through. I was scared. I was nervous. I'm terrified of heights. So the fact that I went over some of the vertical obstacles was cool. I did not climb the rope to ring the bell at the top. I skipped that one. Uh, there was also like, a a rope thing you had to climb up uh, that was, uh, designed like a spider web and then you had to climb over the top and then there were like kind of almost like stairs to come down like a ladder there we go there's the word um, I skipped that one because no thank you um, and then there was one more that I skipped oh yeah there were um, wood posts on either end and then a rope in between and the rope was really high off the ground and you had to like get your arms and legs up over the rope and then drag yourself across like you're going across a canyon or something. I skipped that one. Um, I'm really glad I did because I saw some horrible pictures of rope burn afterward from some of my teammates and I was like, oh yeah, rope burn is bad. So, so I was fortunate not to cut myself at, at all. No, no, um, no rope burn, no cuts. Um, I did get a bruise on my leg from one of the times I went over um, one of the walls, but not a big deal. I bruise my legs all the time running into things. <laughs> Way to admit that to the whole internet. Anyway, um, yeah, so uh, yay, that's my first race of of the year, and I did run in between most of the obstacles because I wanted it like this is my workout for the weekend. Um, It was really weird running with mud in my shoes like because the very first obstacle was just walk through this pit full of muddy water. So right there first thing muddy shoes. Um, So yeah I wasn't fully (laughs) okay with that squish every time I took a step. But, you know, by the end, I got used to it and I got over it. But definitely at first it was weird because all that mud and water, like, weighs down your feet. So it did make it harder to run. Um, So I did get a really good workout out of this whole thing. Um... I don't know that I'm going to dip my feet in mud before I go for a run all the time. Probably never will I do that. (laughs) But like I said, I crossed this off my bucket list. I'm really proud of myself for doing it. 
And um, I could see myself doing another one in the future. Totally. So other than the Tough Mudder, I did, it, it wasn't a Tough Mudder. That's like a brand name of mud runs. The Texas Warrior Mud Out. After that, <laughs> um, I did do a couple runs uh, in my neighborhood outside again. So, and I didn't trip and fall, which is good. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm getting back into it. It helps that this semester is almost over. So I am going to be able to go for a run in the morning <laughs> when it's still cool outside. Um, cause right now I teach in like that optimal time in the morning, uh, when the sun has just come up and it's still cool outside. So it'll be nice, uh, during the month of May, I do not teach. So I'll be able to go for those morning runs outside and really enjoy myself. Um, and then I'll be teaching in June for the summer, so um, I won't be able to do morning runs then, but I think in June it'll probably be too hot anyway and I'll be running indoors on the treadmill, so that works out just fine. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really excited and I'm looking into the next race to sign up for, except this time I want it to be a proper run, not an obstacle course race. And I'm thinking maybe a 10K. Yeah. Um, I've done quite a few 5Ks and I think I'm ready for a 10K. I think I can handle that. 6.2 miles. Um, I used to run six miles all the time back when I was at um, Northern Michigan because I lived uh, three miles from Lake Superior. So I would run on the, um, there was a nice walking path that went around town. So I would run from the house that I was renting to the walking path, run all on that walking path out to Lake Superior, and then come back. So it was three miles out, three miles back. So I used to do that six mile stretch all the time and I really loved it because it went out to the lake and the the wind coming off the lake was nice and cool so like halfway through my run I'm really hot and then the wind cools me off and it was just and it was beautiful it was gorgeous with the water and the flowers and and everything so um yeah <laughs> so Let's see, what else is there? We had our yard sale. I think I told you guys that. Um, that was pretty successful. We're still packing. We just got a bunch of boxes from a family member. So we now have more packing materials. So I need to get on that. Um, oh, yeah. So I think I've done enough rambling. Um, so... If, so I don't know if I will do an episode next week because of the whole, like, finals are busy, then there's graduation, and then we're wanting to go camping. So I don't know if there will be time in there to record another episode. So the next time you see me, it'll either be in one week or two weeks. <laughs> um, but either way, I hope you guys enjoy uh, your week and weekend and get in lots of knitting and crafting and maybe some exercise if you guys are into that sort of thing too. <laughs> Snuggling up with your furry friend. And uh, I will see you guys either in a week or in two, depending on what happens. So <laughs> uh, thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you next time in episode 62. Bye!